Hi, and welcome back to DEI Matters Conversations with Margaret Credo Thomas. And today we are here with Jill Harvey, who is the DEI director for Arlington Town. Hi, Jill. Hi. How are you? <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Thank you for coming back. You know, we always do this every year. This is our annual kind of inauguration <laughs> into the 2023-24 school year. Yeah. So, how you been? Good. Good. It's been a busy time. It's been a busy, busy time. time. Always yeah. busy. Because you know, most people think that when the school year ends, like we're done. Summer is break. <laughs> no, it's not. And <laughs> we're actually working even harder in yeah. the summer, right? To just get prepared for the next coming year. Yeah. So one of the questions that I have for both of us, mm -hmm. <laughs> and we always ask this question, right? So let's reflect on our roles as DEI directors. And what are some of the key milestones and accomplishments for you? Because you've been in your role for four years. I'm starting my third year. So mm -hmm. what are some of the key accomplishments um, that or milestones that you have gotten to in the last four years? Yeah, I'd say the last year is definitely a big one. Um, lots of changes. You know, my DEI division went from a division of one to three, which is great. Nice. Um, we added... Teresa Marzilli, our outreach and engagement coordinator, mm -hmm. and Tim Ross, our full-time ADA coordinator. So that has been a real, just huge difference. Um, and something that a lot of other municipalities don't have. It's still mm -hmm. a singular DEI person. Um, also in the last year, we completed the community equity audit, yep. which was a long process, but right. also a great, um, accomplishment mm -hmm. and then we also started and I'm working on you know what the next steps will be um, doing employee training so we did workshops we did DEI and racial equity workshops mm -hmm. for all of the town employees mm -hmm. so um, it was something that had never been done before we <laughs> did it <laughs> um, over the course of I want to say five months and okay. um, we wrapped that up by the end of January mm -hmm. um, but yeah, those are the really big things that happened in the last year and just also there's so much more. We did our first townwide Lunar New Year celebration, oh, yes. which was amazing. Yep. Um, and now we're really gearing up the language access um, project that we oh, have wow. going on. So we'll be testing out some translator tools, really investing in translation services because mm -hmm. we know that that's really the number one need that yep. we've heard from our departments, yep. but also from community members. So it was a busy year um, and we're excited to keep plugging away at the things we need to do this year. Yeah. <laughs> It's interesting that you added on to your department because I added on to my department. So I'm so we love excited that. that I have a new <laughs> DIBJ specialist. I was like, oh, this is what it feels like to talk to someone in a, in a department. <laughs> um, and and then the other thing that we did last year, we did Narrative 4. Yeah. So we've been doing a lot of partnering with um, Chief Flattery and mm -hmm. the Arlington Police Department. And so that was one of our events that and bridging our relationships with the APD yeah. and the town and Arlington Public Schools. And do we want to share a little bit more about that experience? Yeah, it was a great day. Yes. Um, we had students that we worked with, like you said, narrative um, for they do story exchanges. Yep. So we worked with some MECU, Me MECU. <laughs> MECU <laughs> students and then a few other students as well that participated. Yep. Um, but then I think five or six officers and Chief Flaherty yeah. as well from the police department. Um, but we did a full day of just learning about deep listening, really building some empathy skills yeah. and yeah. talking about compassion and just getting to know one another and share stories so that you can really start to get an understanding of what someone else is going through. Um, not necessarily taking on their experience, right. but trying to put yourself in their shoes so that you can have a little glimpse of what they were going through or feeling in a certain moment by by sharing a story. Yeah, so it, it was, was really great. Yeah, it was a really, a really, really amazing day. Um, one of the things that you mentioned, we did our equity audit now, I, I think it was almost two years ago, and mm -hmm. you just completed the town equity audit last year. 
Um, what are some of what was some of the key findings from that audit that and I think you're starting to do some of those implementations from those yeah. key findings. But what were some of the key findings and what were some of the recommendations? Yeah. So we had I want to say there were 12 findings, um, either 12 or 14, mm -hmm. and then. I want to say 10 total recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, we've been probably since February working on parsing out what's feasible short term and mm -hmm. what we really need to plan for long term mm -hmm. because with all of this comes a price tag. You can't make systemic changes without providing resources. Yeah. So with that, the idea is also that we'd be using um, some of the continued ARPA funds that were appropriated for that. So. Again, the number one thing that came out of it was language access, making sure that we are serving our community members, but also our employees too. Mm -hmm. We're not doing our jobs, we're not feeling fulfilled if we also can't communicate with folks. That's, that's actually um, true, yeah. So that was really the highlight that we really are focusing on now mm -hmm. and looking to invest in. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, I mean, the recommendations were things that I think you and I kind of know, but now we have the data and yeah. everything to back it up. Um, but some of the other topics that we're trying to get to are around communications, both internally and externally, mm -hmm. um, that there's some type of breakdown in which, you know, you might not know what the department next to you is doing mm -hmm. because everyone, their work is so siloed. Mm -hmm. So figuring out ways to increase better communication means, but then also for our community members too. Um, we're gonna be looking at hopefully a way to better diversify boards and commissions. Um, okay. That's something that came up, but again, that goes back to kind of a larger education around how the town works, mm -hmm. letting folks know that boards and commissions do exist. <laughs> what is um, a commission? What is right. it? Um, yeah. How is it important? Yeah. Why should you get involved? Right. So. Really, a lot of what came out of it was that there's a gap in knowledge about mm -hmm. the town structure, how things work, and how to get involved. Mm -hmm. And so we need to figure out the best ways to do that outreach. Um, I think we provide a lot of opportunities. There's so many, and we have so many services and programs, but we can't expect people to come to us. Mm -hmm. We also have to figure out how to bring those things to the community and the different parts of the community that we know are in higher need. Right. You mentioned that um, you're doing some professional development with employees of the town. Mm -hmm. um, I know we do professional development with our educators in Arlington Public Schools. And so let's kind of unpack a little bit of yeah. why there is, why is there an importance of doing professional development with our you know stakeholders who work for like the town mm -hmm. and work for the schools. Yeah. I mean I for me it was a mix of things because I know that we on the town side don't have a set standard of training that everyone goes through. Mm -hmm. um, it's definitely different than schools in which like you legally have to do certain things. <laughs> <laughs> um, we don't have that. Um, certain departments do, but for the most part, we don't. Right. Um, and so in knowing that we would be conducting the equity audit, mm -hmm. I also wanted to make sure that all of our employees understood what that meant. Mm -hmm. That whatever comes out in this report isn't a reflection of you but it's a reflection of the structure we're working within mm -hmm. and how we all contribute to it and how we need to understand really the baseline, just terms and how our history as well right. to know that we might not have created this mess, but we know who has and right. we need to fix it. Right. Um, so with our employees, like I said, it was the first time um, it was, a logistical challenge to get you know a little over 400 people mm -hmm. um, to be in the same place mm -hmm. over the course of a few days mm -hmm. back to back to back mm -hmm. um, but we made it work the commitment of leadership was mm -hmm. key because mm -hmm. it came down from the top that everyone will be doing this mm -hmm. um, we worked with strategy matters a consulting firm out of Boston who is really great in helping us 
craft something that wasn't your cookie cutter training. Mm -hmm. um, and we really didn't even use the word training. We used workshop more so because a lot of what we were doing was engaging with one another mm -hmm. and talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and yes, some learning off of a projector, but also doing more activities to kind of start to unpack some of the things we're feeling or biases we have, etc. cetera. Um, it laid the framework. There's a lot more to do. And now that we kind of have that baseline, my goal is to then start to look ahead and how to do some more work by department. Um, so with all those trainings that we did do, everyone was mixed. We intentionally um, put people at certain tables so that mm. they would have to engage with folks that mm. they've probably never Talk seen, to. talked to, but yeah. they've both been here for 20 yeah. years. So really mixing it up so that you had just tables full of differences. Yeah. And yes, there were days that were difficult, yeah. but then there were also days that we really had some great breakthroughs. Great and conversations. I mean, by the end of it, it was, we came up with five goals as a whole organization. Oh, that's great. Mm -hmm, that everyone came to consensus right. on. Right. So mm. what we're doing now is with those goals, we are tying them back to each recommendation of the audit mm -hmm. to make sure that the voices of the employees are also incorporated. The things that they've said they want to see mm -hmm. is also a part of what we're choosing to prioritize. Wow. That's amazing. Um, one of the things that I am thinking about, you know, with our work, you've been in your position for four, I'm just starting my third year, um, and we know that this work is ever evolving, ever changing. One minute, it's this policy, the next minute, it's not that policy, it's mm -hmm. this policy. And I, I think, you know, I want to talk a little bit about like how, what are some of the strategies or techniques that you're using with your team? You know, I'm thinking about it to continue to, to evolve in doing DEIBJ work. Um, Cause I feel like yep. people think it's like a destination. So every mm -hmm. time I do professional development, I always feel like people are asking me like, no, Margaret, I just need you to give me this. And I'm just like, <laughs> it, no. it's not that simple <laughs> just to give you this, right? Yeah. Because I just feel like the work is ever adaptive. And yeah. so I, I always tell people it's not a destination, it's a journey, mm -hmm. right? So like, what are some of the things that you feel like you're using with your team to continue to involve and grow mm -hmm. and not become stagnant? We... Well, I'll speak for myself. Um, I like to say that like we're not the experts. Like, yes, we know what we're doing, but because it's always changing, you need to stay up to date on whatever it is in the moment. Um, so for myself and my team, I'm consistently looking for opportunities again, because we don't have structured PD. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and PD is professional development, do we say that? Oh, okay. yeah, I, you know, here we go, um, using acronyms, <laughs> thank you. But I'm consistently looking for opportunities for my team to continue learning. Mm -hmm. So I know we're sending our outreach coordinator to a conference, it's not September yet, but in September, mid-September. Tomorrow, um, September. That's like a national-wide mm -hmm. esteemed community engagement. Like oh, it is the okay. thing that if you are in this field, you should be should doing be going it. To it. Yeah. Um, same with our ADA coordinator. Mm -hmm. You know, different symposiums, trainings. Probably he's probably in training once a month. Mm -hmm. um, because again, things, laws, mm -hmm. best practices. Right. Best practices don't always reflect the laws. Right. Right. <laughs> Usually laws are the bare minimum. So right. we're looking for ways to make sure that we're doing the best that we can. And same for me, if it's talking to other um, folks in the field within municipalities, but also in other organizations, mm -hmm. um, just because like we're, it's a little different in government mm -hmm. because there is a lot of red tape. Right. But I get creative. <laughs> I you get very creative. I figure things out <laughs> and, you know. Yeah. We get very creative in this <laughs> position. Yeah. So just constantly talking to people and just staying 
in conversation because you don't have all the answers mm -hmm. you learn from other from others mm -hmm. so that's what we're doing we're just constantly reading looking up articles making reading, sure we're double checking things reading. before we yeah. share it yeah um yeah. and always open to feedback advice yeah. suggestions because yeah. we we don't have the answers and the other biggest thing i think now that we have someone who's leading community engagement is doing more of that yeah. engagement work because yeah. again we're providing services and programs and what have you to our community but if we're not talking to them or hearing from them then what are we doing it for mm -hmm. yeah the family engagement and community engagement is really important because now we have a new family engagement and mm -hmm. communications director which is really important yeah. for us to have one of the things that I wanted to kind of go back to and for us to talk about, because you and I, we meet regularly. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about why. Why what? Why, why do we meet? <laughs> why no, we no, meet? No, no. Yes. Let's talk. I know why we meet. <laughs> you, you were kind of like, wait, what's going on, right? No, I, let's, tell, let's tell the audience like why we feel like it's important for you and I to meet so you and i meet every other week mm -hmm. just you and i mm -hmm. and then we meet also with chief flattery once a month mm -hmm. so let's really t let's really talk about why yeah. because some people are like you're meeting with her yeah and i think <laughs> <laughs> right and i think it's more like do i have to give you an understanding of like Co like collaboration, right? Mm -hmm. So I work for Arlington Public Schools, but Arlington Public Schools is part of the town. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we're working essentially for the same people, the same right. community. Right. Right. Your students, their parents, their parents, most of them are probably on my boards and commissions. Yeah. <laughs> like we're right. working with the same individuals. Right. And so we have to make sure that the work is aligned, mm -hmm. that we're sending the same messages. If there's an issue that you're dealing with or a success mm -hmm. that we know and we can share that with you um, and vice versa whatever's right. happening on i guess the government side right um schools should know it's right. we're all i think used to not working in unison but that needs to change just right. for everyone's yeah. benefit yeah. um but yeah checking in and we do a lot of programming together as well so that makes sense in terms of why we have to meet to plan. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we have to meet to plan. And then the other thing that um, we work closely with is the um, Human Rights Commission, mm -hmm. right? So if anything happens within the schools, we do have a protocol yep. to ensure that you all get that information. And then we also talk about how we work together to do some professional development for, so we talked about this doing, we do, education for our students mm -hmm. and we need to do some education around our families because we also <laughs> had this conversation mm -hmm. about to have that kind of work go hand in hand with one another yeah. so yeah so those are some of the reasons why we meet we've done we've done the equity audit we've shared equity audits mm -hmm. we shared our experiences with that yeah. and yeah so i just wanted to say that because i think sometimes i'm like Okay, you all meet because <laughs> <laughs> for what? Okay. Um, what have been some of the difficulties that you have faced within the last four years of being in this position? Uh, boundaries and time management. Mm. Um, this job, I feel like I've probably said it before, um, but this job just doesn't get left at the office. Mm. It doesn't. Um, it's constant. You mean you don't have a nine to five? I mean, I have like a 24 <laughs> <laughs> seven. Um, I wish I had a nine to five. Um, but no, it doesn't. I mean, just in terms of even scheduling, like again, working with commissions, those are things that are after hours into the night. Mm -hmm. um, but the work is also personal. Like mm -hmm. you have your identity and when things happen in the world or the next town over or anywhere really mm -hmm. um it impacts pretty much everything that we do mm -hmm. so even though you're not on i'm always on mm -hmm. um and that's probably been the biggest challenge just i think the timing also of when i started mm -hmm. um because you started like started, before the pandemics right hit. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, a few months before. And mm -hmm. so with that and then with just 2020 in general, mm -hmm. um, with the racial reawakening. Um, <laughs> yep, it was a reawakening. Yeah. I, I think we went back to sleep, but. Right. <laughs> that part. <laughs> um, I think that was the expectation because mm -hmm. everyone was on. Mm -hmm. And then as things settled, folks kind of got back to maybe their norm. Mm -hmm. But there's some, unfortunately something not great happening every day that has some type of impact. So, um, yeah, I'd say that's been the biggest challenge is that I don't really get to separate myself from the job. Right. Yeah. Um, as I told you, I have a new specialist and she's mm -hmm. like, so when do you do lunch? <laughs> lunch? <laughs> Right. It was when I was like, when I, I remember, even, and then I was like, I don't even know how to answer this question. <laughs> Usually, have liver. <laughs> I had to say to her, so you just have to be like, Margaret, we need to pause for lunch, yeah. and I'll be like, okay. Mm -hmm. um, but I think people don't understand. It's like, especially once once you get in, right? Once you get like, you're you're just like on, mm -hmm. you, and then it, there's your schedule, but then there's those kind of times that something kind of like interrupts your schedule like every day right there's a crisis <laughs> there's a challenge yeah. and so the neat schedule we don't have a neat schedule mm -mm. at all right and yeah. um so you and i did the civics project with the eighth graders mm -hmm. last year and remember they asked like, they what's, were, a, typical what's day? a typical day like, remember you and i looked at each other and started laughing because we were like <laughs> typical day i wish i knew <laughs> <laughs> and so it's like you have your schedule, but then it's like, is it really your schedule right. or is it everybody else's schedule? It's everyone else's. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's really um, the sad part about it. Um, what are... I feel like that just got really depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> um, you're part of a organization, a municipal organization uh -huh. that you started. Uh-huh. Still I, and, right, <laughs> and I'm part of uh, association, AMSEL, the, it's the Association of School Equity Leaders, which mm -hmm. are all DEI directors. Can we talk a little bit about why those organizations or associations are so important for us? Yeah. Um, I, think, be, I think people need to hear that piece. Yeah, for sure. Um, so, yeah, I started... With, at the time, the DEA director for Beverly, um, Abu Toppin, who left. Um, but we started the Mass DEI Coalition, so just a space for folks who have our job, essentially, mm -hmm. for our town or city. Mm -hmm. um, that was February 2021. Mm -hmm. I've gone through two and a half co-chairs, so I'm still oh, wow. the chair because mm -hmm. that turnover for these roles is usually 12 to 18 months mm -hmm. um so i'm sticking it out <laughs> uh, <laughs> um but you know we started just meeting once a month and then very quickly it was realized that it needed to be more frequent mm -hmm. um so we meet still every first and third friday mm -hmm. at 12 which mm -hmm. is after hours mm -hmm. because town town ends at 12 ends at 12 so we need to state um, that yeah. So, yeah, I mean, we meet virtually, mm -hmm. but we've been building in quarterly in-person sessions as mm -hmm. well that are usually longer. They're usually like three or four hours mm -hmm. because it's an opportunity. So roll it back. Um, these roles, again, are typically singular. Mm -hmm. Usually someone gets hired, unfortunately, in response to something, mm -hmm. unless there's been a lot of thought and care put behind it, which mm -hmm. I get. I'm very grateful. Oops, sorry, Mike. Um, I'm very grateful mm -hmm. um, that I have the leadership and support of the folks here in town mm -hmm. because that's made a huge difference in the success of my role and division. Whereas other places, it's really, it's not that. Um, but because these roles are usually a one-person show, there's no guidance, there's no department at the state level that is giving mm -hmm. you um, things you need to follow, mm -hmm. procedures, policies, mm -hmm. anything like that. Mm -hmm. So 
we don't have anywhere to look. Mm -hmm. You can look to other industries like higher ed and the private sector, but things obviously function very different. Mm -hmm. um, for government, it's just, <laughs> it's different. So yeah, we started the group basically to be a place for support, for shared learning, um, dealing with challenges that come up. Yeah. And most recently, I'd say we've been really looking at how to share what we do with municipalities as a whole. Mm. Um, so a year ago, I think it was a year ago, year and a half maybe, I don't remember, but we completed a um, municipal guide, the DEI municipal guide, which we, a small subgroup of us created mm -hmm. um, to help guide municipalities. Mm -hmm. <laughs> if they're thinking about hiring someone, if they have someone within that guide or tips to check on them, make mm -hmm. sure that you're providing them with the right things to be successful. Yeah. Um, explaining that the work isn't just one person's, but right. it needs to be everybody's, baked into everyone's. Yeah, yeah. everybody's um, responsibility. Exactly, yeah. so we created the guide. We're actually starting to do an updated version. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we meet because we, uh, it's really the support network that's needed that mm -hmm. doesn't exist elsewhere. Mm -hmm. um, most, it's not, not, not most, but a number of other fields have that. I know mm -hmm. there's like the planners of color group, mm -hmm. there's different public health groups. So, yeah. um, and that's a piece I don't think I stated that many of the people who are in these roles are usually from, are usually people of color. Yeah. Um, and typically also in predominantly white spaces. Yeah. So it's just another space where you can comfortably be in community with folks yeah. who are experiencing something similar and help you work through some of the challenges and they can celebrate the successes. Yeah, that's exactly the same for us on the association AMSEL, um, which got their official launch in June. Mm -hmm. um, it's the same exact thing, a space for us, a space of learning, a space of we always bring a problem, somebody can bring a problem practice. Mm -hmm. You have a lot of thought partners in a room when you're like, because like you said, sometimes you are the only one mm -hmm. um, and everybody comes to you. So it's really great to be able to have a space. I, we meet once a month, but it's great to have that space and we meet all day. Mm -hmm. So um, to just kind of be like, there are other people in the room that understand what I do and I don't have to explain it. Yeah. So Jill, we're almost out of time. <clears throat> Can you, and you know, I always love talking to you. <laughs> Can you give me a... a maybe one word or a song. A song? Like a song that you're listening to. One oh, word okay. or a song <laughs> that um, that is something that is really your anchor, your in, like your encouragement or, you know, or is it a picture? Is it a favorite book? I just don't want to limit, limit it to what I said is one word or a song. But what is that go to for you? that it encourages you, it brings you joy, it recenters you? <sighs> That's a deep question. <laughs> <laughs> and I have like different categories in my head. Uh -huh. So it's not one thing. Okay. Can I just yeah. say them all? Yeah. Okay. Um, pretty much almost every day, even if it's just in the background, I usually have the office or parks and rec on. Okay. And it just like gives me life because it's so absurd, but I'm also like, this is also reflective of my life right now. <laughs> um, so it's just funny and it reminds me that like, even though it feels like we're kind of always dealing with like chaos or whatnot, mm -hmm. that it's just life. Mm -hmm. um, another thing which just recently, actually yesterday, um, so I had told yeah, you earlier, yeah, I had someone pass yeah. it. Um, their mother said, you know, life is fragile. Mm -hmm. Live every day like it's your last. And it just really hit me. So yeah. that's what I'm sticking with. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's interesting because I um, shared, we were in, uh, um, we, you know, our convocation was yesterday. Mm -hmm. We did a flash mob. I heard. Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> um, and so I was in a department meeting yesterday, and I was just sharing that I just want to be more in the moment and intentional. Like, mm -hmm. just like how you and I are right here. I just want to yeah. be in this moment and not think, like, what's the next moment? 
but just pause and be right here. And I don't think we do a lot of that. Mm -hmm. And so I'm going to try really, really hard to just be in each moment that I'm in. Um, mm -hmm. And then the other thing is, and when I said it, uh, what word is, I'm, I'm really trying to be intentional of giving people grace. Mm hmm. Because I just don't, you know, you just don't know what's going on in the background, yep. right, of someone's life. Mm -hmm. um, and so sometimes we need to pause and just give and just think about you're not just Jill, DEI director. You all you have yeah. other intersectionalities. You're somebody's daughter, right? You're mm -hmm. a friend. Um, and I just think about when I, te I texted you the other day and you and I have a good relationship and you were just like, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, wait, what's going on? And it was that pause moment yeah. that we both had to do and kind of be like, and I was like, what do you need? I'm going to step in. And we've done that for each other. And I mm -hmm. think we need to sh like share that out of you see us as, you know, in our roles. But remember, there's some background noise that's going mm -hmm. on for us, whether that's family, friends or whatever. Yeah. And to remember that if we do drop a ball. If we do not get it right, to remember to give us grace because there's some background noise for us yeah. also as for everybody else. Yep. Absolutely. Joe, <laughs> thank you so much for being back here Thanks on DEI Matters <laughs> Conversations with Margaret Credo Thomas. We are thankful that you all could come back again and join us for these conversations. And we hope that you will come back again.